Katia V5, Shape Sculptor, we still have a couple of features to discuss. So let's take a look at Emboss. I will press Shift F1 and let's check the description for the Emboss. So as we can see, just like the previous um, tool, this will work with curves that will be positioned on the mesh. And uh, we can also um, manipulate the offset and the influence control just like for the previous tool. And uh, we can also define if the triangulation in the area is too coarse. And for this, the profile can be smooth or sharp. And this will have as well the din dynamic checkbox. So just like a curve sculpt. So these two are quite similar. Now to show you the difference, I will load a model. This will be the car hood model. I see that the scale factor has been set to 1000. I will also verify that the model will be the one-to-one -one scale, so the true scale. And we see the dimension of the hood over here. And uh, we know that these are at um, the proper size. Therefore, we can now use the creation, the paint curve, in order to have a working curve for the, the following tool, so for the emboss. I will just draw a shape over here on top of the hood. I will close this by holding down the control key. Now, if we activate the emboss tool, we're going to see the profile. So the first one will be smooth. And now if we check the bottom uh, left of the screen, we're going to see that we need to select the curves and the polygonal mesh. So in this case, the curve will be this one. And now, just like with the previous curve sculpt, I need to hold down control, select the mesh. And we're going to see that even though the values are set to one millimeter for the influence area and for the offset, the mesh will be heavily deformed. So keep in mind that this is at the true scale. Therefore, over here we have um, quite a large, um, quite a large gap. So I don't know exactly why emboss works like this, but if I will click the show for the offset, we're going to see how that offset is currently set to one. If I will change this to be five, we're going to see that it will go to the true size. So now if I will go again to one, this should be that amount of um, emboss. So if I will click apply, we're going to see how that will work. Maybe the initial offset, since the mesh has been imported over here using the import tool and has been scaled a thousand times, maybe that has, um, has some effect for that uh, initial high emboss offset value of one millimeter but keep in mind that if you're going to change that afterwards it will restore and uh, from now on it should act as um, as intended if i will go with a value for the offset of 15 millimeters and I'll click apply we're going to see that um, the inner mesh will remain over there but the other elements of the hood will rise so only the selected, uh, let's say, uh, surfaces. So if I will go over here with 100 millimeters, we're going to see how the hood will um, be deformed like this, but the other parts of the mesh will remain over there. So keep that in mind that emboss will only affect the connected um, areas. We can also go with a negative value. So for example, minus 100 millimeters, if I click apply, we're going to see that what emboss does is that the initial inner, uh, let's say, area defined by that curve will remain over there, while the others will be slowly deformed according to the distance of the offset. We can also increase the influence area. So again, this is bugged with one, as we can see, because if I will type in five, we're going to see how that influence area will be a lot smaller. But now we're also going to have a much more coarse geometry over here. So this is where we can start and do some refinement. We can also enable dynamic just like within the previous um, tool. And for the direction, we see that currently this is the set direction. We can also right click over here and uh, we can add this to be aligned to the compass. 
and we're going to see how that will change. So now with negative minus 100, so according to the z axis of the compass, this will be the output. And with positive 100, we're going to see that in this case it will still remain the same, but with minus now that we swap that, it will go onto the other side. So we also have the the other profile over here, so this will be sharp. But considering the influence area for this, I will make it a little bit larger, for example 50, because over here it will be more obvious the difference between smooth and, uh, and sharp. So this is how we can make use of, uh, of the emboss tool. Keep in mind, just like within the previous curve sculpt, this will not have a history. So for example, if I will click OK, my initial mesh will be deformed. I only have the possibility to go back with the, um, with the undo. But if I would to um, work some little more on maybe some other elements, keep in mind that the history will be lost. So um, now I have the undo, but initially it will um, delete the mesh curve and afterwards we'll go back to that. So if, for example, I will go over here and do a curve sculpt for this one, select the mesh. We can also see the difference between those two. So um, they are quite uh, similar in terms of uh, influence area and offset, but the output is a little bit different. So over here, we only have the geometry added to that um, influence area, while for the emboss, that surface will remain in position and the other components will be deformed. And again, this is a destructive um, operation. So everything is integrated within the STL over here. So this is why when you work with this, I recommend that you do a copy, a paste, or you import the model twice. And uh, you're going to keep also the original. Now, let's take a look at, uh, at the files that have been added within the documentation of the software. So this is the pin. If I'm going to check the information for this one, we're going to see that this pin will have 130 millimeters in length. Therefore, if I would to emboss this for one millimeter, this should not have a deform just like the previous one, since that had the scaling on import added a thousand times. But let's see, I will select the two curves. I hold down control. And now I'll hold down control and select the pin. And we're going to see that the emboss will do the same uh, thing. So if I will click on show over here, we see that um, Katia considers that this offset is one uh, millimeter. When in reality, if I would add over here 1.1, press tab to do an update, this will be one millimeter for this. So again, the same uh, problem for the influence. I will just add five. If I will click um, apply, you're going to see how that will be deformed. And um, we can change as well to align this according to a compass. And now if I will move the offset over here, we're going to see plus five and minus five will have the following output over here. And uh, for this, I can do various refines. Keep in mind that with each uh, click that you're going to do over here for the refine, all of the triangles that are positioned over here will be divided. So for each triangle, we are going to obtain uh, two different ones. So we see a triangle over there. I will click on refine and we're going to see how the triangle will be divided into two additional triangles and so on. So for each of those, the complexity of the model will heavily increase. So it is not recommended to add a lot of refinement. As you can see, currently Katia is struggling with this. So it's currently not responding. We see that we have a status bar on the bottom and the estimated time is set to zero seconds. But in reality, this will be a lot more than that. But slowly as the software will, um, let's say, flash the memory, we see how uh, it will process that. And if I will go back and have that visualized, we see that emboss curve over here. 
And we also have the following file, so emboss multi-curve, which is this one. If I'm gonna check the mesh for properties, we're gonna see that this file was created in 2003, so 21 years ago. So let's see, for this one, if you wanna do an emboss, I will click on emboss over here, and I would like to select the inner loop of this um, letter. If I will show this, afterwards hold down control, select the mesh as well. We're gonna see that one millimeter will be an offset like that. And if I will add two millimeters, this is in reality that um, that distance. So not sure exactly why emboss always for the first deformation will heavily move that. But keep that in mind when you are uh, working with this. So if I will add this, for example, 55, we're gonna see how this will be deformed. Okay, so I hope that you find this, um, this video useful. We still have the following four operations over here, and we see that for the grid modeling, we also have interactive grid and also mesh morphing. So I will present those within the following videos. For now, I will position a similar video on the left side. I will add the Katia V5 tips and tricks over here at the top. And I will also add a subscribe button to the right. So that's it. Thanks for watching.